The Ford Pinto case reveals moral issues regarding withholding information and ignoring human rights for the sake of earning profit. This case questions the value of human life and unveils the unethical mindsets of individuals in the corporate world. I chose this case in particular because it's very relative to my career path. I plan to work in business and with that sector of the economy. It is very important to uphold a certain code of ethics. The corporate world undeniably have a reputation for unethical behavior. I remember reading articles of discrimination in the workplace towards women, races, um, PWDs, and so forth. So this case really shows how we lose in touch with our humanity because we let greed and materialistic things cloud our judgments. Um, in 1968, the Ford Motor Company introduced a subcompact car called the Ford Pinto and was recommended and led by the very ambitious vice president at the time, Lee Iacocca. The company needed an edge to gain market share against top competitors such as Toyota, Chevy, um, etc. The automobiles were designed and developed on an accelerated schedule. Um, the first few years, the sales were great until the company started to receive lawsuits. I'll just describe the two most notable ones, such as the Grimshaw case and the death of three women. So in, in May 1972, Lily Gray and 13-year-old Richard Grimshaw were traveling in their Pinto when a car struck them traveling around 30 miles per hour. Their car ignited in a fire which killed Lily and heavily injured Richard. Ford was able to pay in damages. Next, in 1918, Three women were killed when their car hit a vehicle driving at a low speed by a man. According to my research, the Ford Pinto resulted in 180 burn deaths, 180 burn injuries, and 2,100 burned vehicles. The model had a very defective fuel system design that causes explosions. So the fuel tank was located behind the rear axle instead of above it, which was done to create trunk space. Their bolts positions threatened gas tank. Um, the fuel filler pipe design led to the increased probability that it would disconnect from the tank, causing gas spills and ultimately fires. This leads to being this leads to the model being more vulnerable to rear end collisions. In addition, the project took 25 months rather than 43 months, which is the industry standard. So these, so these are the reasons why they fell short. They had access to new design, but chose not to implement it because the costs were too high. The adjustments would cost $11 per vehicle. They ignored alarming results from the crash tests. So when the Pinto is struck from the rear at 31 miles per hour or greater, the gas tank ruptures. 8 out of 11 of the tested cars resulted in potentially catastrophic situations. They defended their decision um, against the court, um, in front of the court of not recalling the model because, one, they're based on their risk-benefit analysis, which excuses the defendant if the monetary costs of making that production change was higher than the societal benefit of that change. The societal costs were, according to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, was $49.5 million, which is way lower than the cost to make that adjustment, which, to which will total to $137 million. This analysis says it is acceptable, acceptable to do this. Also, their cost-benefit analysis also agrees. From previous advertisement that emphasizes safety, um, it did not receive much attention, so they concluded that safety does not sell. From this, they didn't really focus on safety features of the cars. If they recalled the cars, this would lead to bad reputation or negative publicity from, the, from consumers and the media. There was no law that required them to redesign the fuel system. They said they placed the gas tank correctly. And their sole main stance is the risk benefit analysis. This analysis really neglects human and emotional circumstances. 
So, I found many ethical problems in this case. That money and numbers are more valuable than life. Protecting life costs too much. Life is equivalent to $200,000, according to the NHTSA. They forgot that it was human life they were quantifying. They ignored the benefit of saving lives in the risk-benefit analysis, ignored human rights for the sake of profit, and the moral agents within the company faced their own ethical dilemmas. For example, Lee, Lee Ayakoka, the vice president of the corporation, he had to be a prime example by making ethical decisions, but because of greed, he put profit over safety. The employees especially, the engineers, were morally responsible because they had to agree in a code of ethics upon employment, right? And they knew the consequences of the defective designs. It would cost lives, endanger, danger people, and injury. They could have placed more effort in going against the production and do what is morally right rather than obeying their superior. In a utilitarian perspective, their decision of, of choosing not to redesign is acceptable. That's why util the utilitarianism in this case is, is a problem. So utilitarianism is, raises what would create the greatest happiness or good for the greatest number of people, that any actions taken can be morally justified if it's taken for the best interest of the society. So upon choosing not to increase costs, it made the Pinto very affordable to customers, and this happiness was technically greater than the harm it inflicted, the deaths, the injuries, so forth. Hence, it would be more beneficial for everybody in monetary terms if they launched the car the way it is with no adjustments and no changes. It, out, it outweighs the loss of relatively few lives compared to those who don't have catastrophic events. This is where this theory can be problematic. We don't deem human lives as priceless or give any prior prioritization. The theory cannot possibly be used to put a value on human life as Ford attempted to do. The dangers in utilitarianism lie with the potential for abuse and in abandoning, abandoning the inherent principles, Ford demonstrated those dangers in that action. Life is invaluable and cannot be translated into monetary terms, and this would conclude to dehumanizing individuals. So furthermore, in reference to lessons I've learned in class, this case has really reminded me the importance of the procedural framework for rational decision making, wherein we gather the facts, identify the stakeholders, articulate the dilemmas, list alternatives, and then weigh in the consequences. The moral agents could have carefully rationalized their choices and also put the utmost importance to human life, safety, and duty in order to reach a more morally right decision. In determining a recommendation, I'll first talk about the, t the other two ethical theories in which I have chosen and which one I have chosen. So in a deontological perspective, um, this follows the approach of duty and obligations. This, this principle argues that actions should be based or governed by our moral duties and obligations. It emphasizes the need to obey the rules and duties regardless of the situations and circum circumstances that we find ourselves in. Um, it argues that regardless of the arguments presented by the Ford company, they, are still, they still have the duty to be bound to protect the lives of everyone who uses their cars. They are crimin criminally liable for prosecution for killing even though it's indirect. It is their duty and obligation to protect the drivers regardless of the situation and accidents. In a virtue ethics perspective, um, on the other hand, it emphasizes human behavior as a main determining factor in considering and making sorry, moral decisions and not rules. While the virtue ethics would agree that directors of the Ford of the Ford Pinto of the Ford, sorry, 
are, at, are after profits and therefore controlled by greed, which culminates from their characters. Using the deontological theory, I recommend that moral agents, including the heads and the employees, to abide by their code of ethics that they agreed upon when taking their positions in the company. Um, I, I, I selected this theory. And they should stay true with their duties and obligations, which are to value human life and safety, to respect others, and so that no information is kept secret, and be selfless, and lastly, truthful. This case is very relevant, most re relevant to me um, compared to the other cases that I was chosen, uh, the options, because as I plan to one day become an entrepreneur, and own a business, there will be dilemmas in which I'm faced to choose from a more really right decision to one that increases my profit. I am very appreciative, appreciative that Ateneo offers classes such as Philo and Theo to not only mold an ambitious entrepreneur, but one that upholds high ethical standards and values. Thank you.